Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I'm back with day 29 of our Summer Adventure Bible Journaling Camp. Um, I've heard from a few of you that you guys are good to go through Friday, and um, I'm hoping that's good with everybody. So, all right friends, um, I woke up this morning and realized that in a very busy weekend, um, I had planned to work on videos and we got sidetracked. So, um, just some family things came up and so, anyways, I apologize, but it was a kind of a good way to wake up. Um, I didn't realize that I didn't have my, that it had not already been videoed because it didn't pop up on my phone and that also that this is the first thing I'm going to get to do today. Um, besides my husband and daughter. So anyways, but um, let's pray, let's get started, and yeah, all right. Dear Lord, thank you for today, and thank you for this morning to wake up to a project. And um, Lord, I pray that though this is a very different day in our house, with lots of people and lots of different things going on, um, I pray that I'll be able to focus on what you've laid on my heart for this day. Lord, what a blessing it is to be a part of this group and with all these amazing women. And I ask you, God, to just block out all the noise and the people around me and help me to, um, to, to focus not only on you and the project, but on your word. God, today is such a good scripture for this. And, uh... Lord, I know that normally when I, I come to you for this time, I usually pick the quietest time with little to no one here. And um, so I thank you for this time. I thank you for the distractions that are going on around me. And I thank you for the provision of this scripture and this camp day. And camp is like that, Lord. It's, a, it's, a, it's fairly predictable, but sometimes it's unpredictable. And uh, I, I'm just thanking you for you as you walk through these times with us. We give you this time. We ask for you to guide our steps, guide our words, guide our thoughts. And we love you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, okay let's get started. So literally, I had somebody walking through here. <laughs> I'm so not used to it. Ah, oh, it's all good. It's all good. So anyways, okay, so um, here we go. I would hope that everybody still has their envelope, and if you don't, don't worry about it. That was from the first kit, and those of you who do not have the first kit, you can grab any kind of anything, whether you have an envelope or junk mail or whatever you have. Um, and some of the junk mail envelopes do fit the page uh, on this particular signature and hopefully will fit your page as well. Hold on one second, guys. Let me get a sip of water. I ran in here so fast that I grabbed my water from last night. And um, I usually drink coffee first thing in the morning. So if I seem a little groggy, you'll know why. Okay, and in the new kit, everybody should have a shiny little camper so grab that nail and just kind of not super fussy cut but cut around it to where you're comfortable and I'm gonna throw my goodies away here because I cut mine right before we got started and um, everybody in their kit should have gotten a thin little washi or any washi you would like to play with today in the kit everybody received a little sticker um, page divider or you know tab grab that if you can and most of the new kits I'm, I'm thinking everybody if I remember right received a an arrow so I picked this one it kind of has a little metallic on it I think I gave everybody a metallic one and a non-metallic you can grab whatever you like it just kind of matches I grabbed a journaling card from our last kit in the new kit, everybody received some of these uh, creative memory goodies. Um, just grab whichever one. There's there's a variety of them, and everybody got a variety of different ones. So grab something like that. I also grabbed my little bitty, uh, one of my pieces of acetate. 
Not sure if I'm going to use this yet, but I'm going to pull it out just in case. Everybody received some kind of ephemera, and they, these are from Illustrated Faith. I believe this was in the, this is in the second kit. So whatever your little piece of ephemera is, you know, go ahead and grab that. Everybody received a little journaling sticker or a little, um, you kind of like a tag sticker. Grab one of those. And then I grabbed an additional from the new um, kit. This particular one, I think I'm going to save this journaling card. I think I'm going to go with that one. Alrighty, let me just set that to the side. And then for today's verse, it is 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So when I would teach our children this verse, it, I used a different version, different translation. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. And I kind of thought this verse really fit my situation today because it's talking about anxieties. Okay, I'm going to scoot this stuff to the side and I'm going to trim this up while we talk. So, I don't know how you guys are. Um, you know, all of our kids, when they grew up, it was never a quiet house. It was always very noisy, as I'm sure many of you can attest to, even with, and sometimes even without kiddos. Um, and that will be true, too, in our house as well. Um, but I wanted to, hold on, I'm trying to make sure, there we go. Um, I wanted to talk about that this morning because, like I said, I usually video in the quiet of the day by myself, and there will be a point where everybody will be gone because there's dental appointments and all kinds of things, so I'm going to have a little bit of time with you guys quiet, uh, in a quiet time later, and I'll explain at that time why. Um because I'll be working head on our on our verses on our um, camp again, and um, anyways, long story short, um, so I recognized it was I was anxious because number one, <clears throat> pardon me, I hadn't realized I had not filmed this video. Goodness, when you are so busy that you can't remember if you filmed a video or not, that's crazy. But um, I knew the number, you know. But I just, anyways, you know, it's just one of those things. And, um, I just, you know, was just like, oh my goodness, what do I do? And I thought, just get up and go do it. Just get up and go do it. It's not a big deal. And, um, and some of you guys, I know you guys, I've, I've gotten messages that you're, you love waking up to them at 530 in the morning. If you're in central time, United States. <clears throat> so I apologize. Pardon me to anybody. I've disrupted your schedule today. Um, we'll be ahead, but but just the noise and the thought of, oh, I, I made a mistake, I didn't get it up on time, uh, the videos, and we have had, guys, our internet is, we spent two hours and 20 minutes on the phone Friday trying to attend to that, and my husband was with me, and I looked at him and I said, I told you, I told you it was taking this long, and that nothing was resolved. Um... And, and sometimes my husband, you know, can be a little put out and say, okay, well, I guess I'll have to handle this myself. And then he was going, he needed to get on a work call, he needed to get things done, and we had absolutely no internet, not even a phone call could we give or receive. And, um, and our phone company, we've been doing this, we, when we talked to them Friday we found out we've been doing this for six weeks and my husband was just like this is beyond ridiculous and I was like uh-huh yes I concur <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean I didn't say anything you know I just kind of just to my in my heart I was just like mm -hmm, you know but it was one of those things where I could just see the anxiety building and building and building and building and he was getting frustrated and I was like you need to stop because at this point, there's not a whole lot that we can do. We just have to stop and think that this is just how it is today. And, you know, and he doesn't, he doesn't always like that because his job doesn't allow him that luxury. So, anyways, it was just, it was one of those days where you just kind of go, yeah, I'm not going to do any good to us if I say anything right now. So I'm just going to be really quiet. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just playing while I'm talking. 
And I'm also talking about what it is when you have these things happen and how it makes it anxious for you, for others. What do we do with that? So we pray. We pray. We stop and we pray. I have tried to start this video, I think, four times now. And and I always prayed at the beginning of the video, but I had not even stopped to pray before because I was just like, oh my goodness, i got to go get it done. Da, 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 da. And, um, and I'm... I'm not a really good, you know, morning person, I'll admit. I mean, I can be first one up, last one to sleep. But after such a busy weekend and a hot, I don't know how y'all are doing, but wow, we are hot down here. Um, weekend, I just found that I was just really tired. So, okay, so I'm going to undo this side and just kind of put it over here till I can rebuild it again. But I learned very quickly that... I needed to stop and pray. So when we get anxious, when we have lots of cares in the original version that I had memorized with my children, um, we need to stop and pray. Because there's no way we can take on what this world gives us on our own. At least I can't. And, um, and that's the whole purpose of our relationship with the Lord is that <clears throat> he is there. He is waiting for us. He knows what we're going through, but He's not going to interfere. He, he is a God that waits on us. He gives us the right to think and ask and seek Him. And that's what He wants. He wants us to seek Him in these moments. And um, anyway, so what I'm thinking about here is I love the retro kind of -ness of my particular one that I grabbed out first. I love campers. And when our kids were little, and I love, well, this piece was cut. I did not cut it. So when I keep my kids, I keep the boo-boos, so to speak. So <laughs> if there's any boo-boos, I have it. But it still works. It's totally fine. So I wanted to share this, that if you accidentally made a wrong cut, guess what? Our tape runner will hold it. It'll go right down on our project. And nobody will be the wiser. Just us. Just us chickens. Are we going to know that there's a little slit there? So, but I, I love campers. And I wanted to share that, you know, we took our kids camping when they were little. We had a little camper. And, uh, I mean, and when I say little, I mean little. We did have our own shower and bathroom in it. And I was very thankful for that. And I really liked having my own kitchen because our son has severe food allergies. So, you know, it was always hard to travel and go out to eat. So I really loved the affordability of cooking my own dinner and then um, you know, having my own fridge, things like that. And, we, and it was a small fridge, just like, you know, just like what we think. But um, one of the things that my husband and I called our little camper was our little goat island and in in uh in maine in new england there is a, a lighthouse that i love and the lighthouse is out on an island off the coast of maine and it is called goat island and our goat island light and i i would love i i mean that was such a i don't know it was such a big important thing to me. So when you use your clear, it will show through. So I'm putting my tape where I can't see it. And I think I'm going to put a little bit behind that, um, that little like turquoise if I can. Yep, I got a little bit on it. So you can put tape on certain things when you have clear eyes tape or you need to be, you know, aware that you'll need to cover it up. So I'm going to go that way with it. Anyway, so back to it all. And this one is a sticker. Isn't that neat? So, I loved our little camper. <coughs> Pardon me. And I loved this lighthouse. And this is back when... Pardon me. <coughs> Excuse me. This is kind of back when you could get away and get away. Though we did have cell phones in the latter part of our days camping. Um, in the original days, it was... 
you know, we'd have to leave a number where we were going to be in case of an emergency, things like that. But, um, we always kind of had this situation in our lives that it was always nice to get away from things. Hold on one sec. And the camper was that for me and for my husband. Um, he worked a lot and you know, I wanted our children to have time with him and to have memories with him. And so, you know, I really worked hard that in his, you know, spare time, and my husband is one of those guys, like, he has to go out and do tax work this morning before he goes to the dentist, and he's out mowing. I mean, he's just always going to be a busy guy. But, to me, one of the great things about when we took our kids camping was he disconnected. He would focus on our children. He would focus on our family and, you know, and, and focus on just getting away and enjoying himself. I mean, there is a game that our kids played a hundred bazillion times. It was in our camper. It was who's who. And it was this little game where you had to guess who the other person had on their, you know, their side of the game. And I will get, I don't know what happened to ours. It may be in the basement. I'll have to see. But if we somehow lost that game, um, I'm going to get another, ga ga another for, you know, round of it for grandchildren because it was so much fun. It brought back so many sweet memories. And then, um, of course, they played chess and we all read books and we listened to books on tape and, you know, went swimming and hiking and sightseeing and everything you do when you go off on a camping trip. And, um, and, you know, we took our children to museums and, you know, all kinds of things that we could find that everyone might enjoy. And there were some museums that were for certain people that others didn't enjoy and, you know, how that goes in a family. But it was a place to get away. And one of the great things for me when we went camping was, um, I was a homeschool mom. So I was with my children 24-7. And I love my children. But everybody needs some downtime so my husband in our little camper there was a you went in and you're right in the kitchen and there was a bathroom behind and you came in turned right and there's a little tiny kitchen with a little tiny table or a little table and you know like little bench seats and then we had a long bench that folded down into a bed and then of course the table would turn into a bed and then there was a room at the end and it was a tiny room. It was enough to walk in and close the door. And then and you had to shimmy to close the door and then climb up on the bed. And above the bed was another little, like, tiny loft bed. But who could sleep with somebody above them? <laughs> so that just always was storage, like, for linens and clothes and everything else. And so what my husband would do sometimes is he would play games with the kids. And, you know, after I cook dinner and everything and then I would get my shower and go and crawl in our bed and I would shut the door and read. I would listen to my own books on tape or my own tapes, my own record, you know, because back then we had cassette tapes. And um, I, it was just a place for me to kind of go and get away. It became my place where I did Bible study, where I prayed, where I was alone with God where I rested, where I un, unplugged, because even though my husband worked a lot of hours as an at-home mom, um, I worked a lot of hours, and, um, and I was very glad to do it, but I recognized at a certain point, I was ne we never took a date night. I never dropped my kids. I, there was a season where I went like one day a week to mom's day out, but then I usually worked to pay for them to be able to go to mom's day out. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me, because we were just poor. I mean, we just didn't have, we did not have lots of extra money. So, um, and I'm going to put this arrow up because when we pray, we lift our, our prayers float up to God. Like, um, in the Passover or Seder ceremony, you light candles as the woman or the wife, and then you um, you waft the the smoke, like prayers up to God, and so it's such a really good picture of how our prayers go up to God, 
And um, anyway, so I want my prayer to go up to the Lord. And I recognized I needed a break sometimes. I mean, I loved my I loved my children. I loved my children. But I also recognized I was exhausted all the time. Um, it was... It was a busy time in our lives, of course, and I'm so thankful to have been there and to be able to do what we did. I mean, we literally cut our income in half when I came home, and you know, God more than supplied before, during, and after. And um, it just, it was just a time and a season, so we couldn't afford, you know, fancy babysitters. We couldn't, we just couldn't afford hardly anything, and that's why our camper was such a blessing because. We had a camping membership, so we could usually afford to go camping because I think our membership took us, we paid once a year, and then there were certain campgrounds we could go to for like $6 a night. And what a blessing that was. And um, <clears throat> anyways, long story short, I would go in that back little room and I would just pray. And, um, and I loved that. That became, you know, and, and the other thing I wanted to say too is even once we got cell phones they usually didn't reach the campgrounds I know imagine that <laughs> so you know I mean there are times that when we're going through difficulties we need to just get alone with God unplug if we can and just pray and even in the emergency rooms and many 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 hospital visits that happened in the last many years of my parents lives there were even times when they would be sleeping, nurses would not be coming in and out as often in the middle of the night, and I could just pray and sit there quietly and make my own little kind of little goat, you know, little, um, pardon me, goat island, my little goat island, or even um, kind of like a war room. And um, so as you go through the difficulties of life, and we go through them, and then it, you know, and then unfortunately, sometimes we have to go through them again. But if that happens, stop. Just like this morning for me. You know, I woke up and I started running to come get a video off to y'all. I could hardly talk. I had all the morning grogginess that you've heard this morning in my throat. But I needed to just stop. After like the fourth start, it was like, okay, whew, let's stop and pray. So, friends, let's stop and pray right now as I close you guys out. But let's focus on casting all our burdens on Him because He cares for us. That's a promise from first. Part, I want to say Second Peter, sorry. First Peter 5, 7. So again, and this one says casting your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. What a great God we have. What a God who meets us exactly where we are. Whether we are on time getting everything done, whether we wake up and realize, oh my goodness, I'm behind. Um, our God is with us. He's there. He kind of nudged me this morning when I checked my phone. What a good God. All right, friends, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just stop and we praise your name. We thank you for knowing each of us so much that you're able to nudge us when we're in those difficult times. You're able to guide our steps. You're able to just listen to our hearts. And I thank you for this verse from 1 Peter that reminds us that we can give you all of our frustrations, our burdens, our anxieties, because you care for us. Thank you, Lord, that Peter communicated this from you, Lord, because what an important verse that is. Because you care for us. Thank you, God, for caring for us. Lord, I pray for each and every person who will hear this video that they will have their own little Glorietta or their own war room or their own place to go even in the wee hours of hospital stays or just in the busyness of their life with people walking in and out and lots of noise going on. And I pray that they'll find that quiet space where they can go and be alone with you. God, I thank you for my quiet space to be alone with you today. And it's funny, even though it was totally chaotic here in the house this morning, which is never what it's like until, you know, at this time of the day. But all of a sudden, it's quiet now. And all of a sudden, 
we're with you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, I pray for each and every person who's a part of this camp or who in the future will be a part of this video series, and I pray that you would bless them. God, thank you for all that you've done in our camp, and thank you for those who want to go ahead and hang in until Friday. What a, the sweetest messages have just come, and I just, I love the enthusiasm of each and every camper. I am in awe of what you have done and what you continue to do and how many talk about how you are tying together not only camp scripture but into their churches sermon their pastor's sermons and Sunday schools and Bible studies and personal times God you are amazing and you've done this with me and I thank you for that Lord we give you the rest of this week we ask that you bless it and um the rest of the week of camp, but also I pray, God, it's Monday, and I pray for each and every person to have just a lovely week, a week that they they are so well aware that you are walking with them, guiding them, going before, going with, and behind each of us, God. Thank you, Lord. It's a very busy week for us, but I'm just so thankful for this camp because you're going to allow me today to slow down and be with, with these amazing women. And I pray that you bless them. And Lord, I know that right now we're, we have a lot of women on our channel, but I know there have been men in the past. So if there are any men that are still a part of our channel or are watching this video series, I pray that you bless them as well because men are just as busy. You know, women, we think about it because we're the, we work, we have children, some of us have children, some of us grand, have grandchildren, some of us, you know, are, are maybe empty nesters, but all of a sudden now we are taking on all those projects that we left behind all those years. And it's so easy to get busy. Help us to stop and pray when we are anxious or when we are dealing with burdens because you've given us this promise that you care for us. What an amazing verse, Lord. Thank you again for all that you're doing. And I pray a special blessing on each one today. We pray all these things in your son's most holy name. Amen. Okay, guys. I am going to stop and get some coffee <laughs> after I let you guys go. And I get this video uploaded. But what a wonderful day this was in our camp. Like I said, I thank you guys in my prayer for all your amazing uh, messages about extending out. I'm so humbled by y'all. I really, really am. And I'm so thankful to God that this is an enjoyable season, an enjoyable camp for y'all. I hope it has been so for everyone. Um, I feel so blessed to be here with y'all. I feel so honored to be with y'all. Um, it has been, it has been a tremendous journey for me. Um, my, <clears throat> pardon me, my, my own walk has grown in ways that, you know, just like any camp, we leave camp, you know, we're just like, oh, I mean, every time we take our kids to, um, we would go to camp at Glorietta, New Mexico, and it was always a, you know, a, 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 not just a camp, but it was um, a Christian camp. And so we would have wonderful speakers and amazing times, and a lot of them were for homeschoolers, and I would cry as we would leave. And it's not because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to go home. It was just that I just didn't want that amazing time with the Lord and amazing friends and all of that and I didn't want it to end I mean, it was such a blessing and I know that my schedule will get busy again and it'll be time you know to let go and move on and go to the next project which I will come back with a video on that today but it's been a blessing to be with y'all so I pray that your day is blessed creative and lovely guys keep serving him well God loves you so much. He cares for you. All right, friends. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.